only your word be heard. And if it's not, let the people know the difference. Amen. As I do each year about this time, I teach a class on Sunday mornings, about eight weeks running, exploring the Episcopal experience. It's a general class, really, on uh, the Episcopal Church and who are we and why do we do what we do and what do we believe and, and why do we believe it and things like that. Um, as it turns out, one of the main topics every time I teach this class is worship. What does this mean? <laughs> what does this mean? Right? Long-term Episcopalians always learn something new, and those new to our tradition have many questions. We call ourselves a people of a book, the Book of Common Prayer, we say that the way we pray is the way we believe. But this isn't always easy because it's not uncommon for Christian worship to be arranged more as the way we feel is the way we pray. That our prayer and our worship ought to be mostly about how we feel. Does it make me feel good today? I mean, it's okay. Uh, we do quite a bit of work here at Trinity to be sure that we have a pretty great worship experience on Sunday morning. And those people who are responsible for helping plan our worship on Sundays think about everything, the prayers and the songs and the postlude and the prelude and the readings and the sermons and the, are the candles right? And do we have enough communion bread? And is the flow of communion working or not? And you know what I mean. We do care if you like it. <laughs> it matters if the opening hymn lifts us up or is kind of a downer. <laughs> and just when I say that, though, here comes the prophet Micah today, who reminds us that worship isn't really about our expectations and our feelings. That the point of it is, is the object of our worship, God. <laughs> we come here in prayer and praise to focus on God. And this Eucharist is the way that we thank God for focusing on us. So as your rector, and I guess that is the lead worship planner here at Trinity. I guess what Micah is saying, it's not good enough to, for me to ask, I, I wonder if people will like that hymn or not. <laughs> Usually what I'm saying is, I don't like that hymn, let's change it. <laughs> <clears throat> at some point, we need to ask the more basic question, what does God want from us? If I want to know what you want, I ask you. And if I don't ask you and you don't like it, you tell me. <laughs> but asking God what God wants, that's a little bit more challenging. We're always groping to find the answer of what God wants in our lives. That's why we do end up saying, will, will, will we like this or not? Will this feel good or not? When we ought to be asking more often, what does God want from us? And then Micah, in what is likely the only verse he's ever remembered for in his entire existence, asks the question directly, what does the Lord require? With what shall I approach God. The first few verses of this passage we have today is like the scene in a courtroom. It starts with God saying, I have a case against you. And this is the case that I have against you. Here are all the ways 
that I have been faithful to you. I brought you out of Egypt. I saved you from slavery. I gave you amazing leaders, Moses, Aaron, Miriam. I saved you from the king of Moab. And all of it so that you might know that I love you. Yet, you still don't know how to say thank you. That's the gist of it. You still don't know how to say thank you. So isn't it interesting that in this little moment of our relationship with God, when it comes to our response to God's love, where do we go? Worship. How we worship. What we do in worship, because this is our response to God's love. Our response to God being the God who loved us before we had a chance to love him. What do you want from us, says Micah in frustration. What do you require? Require is a little tricky here. I don't want to soften it, but it really is. What are you asking of us? And Micah says, let me give you some suggestions. <laughs> Do you want burnt offerings? Do you want us to sacrifice animals to you? Is that, is that a good response? Is that a good thank you? How about herds of rams sacrificed? After all, animal sacrifice was what was going on in Micah's day. Do you want my oldest child? Do you want my oldest child? Is that the thank you that you need from me? What should this look like? Praise music, raised hands, smells and bells, processions around the church behind crosses. I don't need any of it, says God. You know what is good. What does the Lord require? What, what does thank you look like? that this empowers us to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with God. That this worship is not antithetical to that, but rather feeds us, feeds us to the core of our souls in ways that we leave to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Sometimes it is, I hear the complaint, how could we ever know what God wants? But Micah says, that's not your question. You know what God wants you might think it's too difficult to do. But you know what God wants. Not the little rubrical instructions in the prayer book being followed perfectly. But what are you doing with this? Monday through Saturday. Take this into your life. Do justice. Don't just think about it. Don't just advocate for it. But you, you do it. Choose mercy. We live in a world of self-interest and self-promotion and looking out for number one and standing up for ourselves and the survival of the strongest and self-care and self-help out the wazoo. God requires mercy. Studies have shown recently, I've read in the secular news, believe it or not, as if it's a major surprise, <laughs> acts of service have an influence, a positive influence, maybe as much as medication on our anxieties and our 
depressions. Jesus doesn't command us to love because it makes life easier. He commands us to love because he first loved us. Fully. Without condition. Walk humbly with God. We don't set up all of the rules. Sometimes those who see themselves as doing justice don't do it so humbly. Some people see themselves as holding the right position on the right issue, and it's okay to push it through to everyone without any humility. I'm doing justice, you're not. Walk. Walking humbly can be a great challenge for those who actually do do good and do know justice and do know truth matters. What does God want? With disarming directness, I don't need anything of you to love you. That's not the question here. Worship is not about proving you are worthy to me. Worship is about saying thank you. And if you want this worship to be complete, to be full, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. What does God want from us? Actually, God told us directly. Amen.